2020 has been a challenging year in many respects, but one during which communications networks have proven their importance, their value and their resiliency. So as we come towards the end of the year, what key trends are emerging? Well, I'm talking today with Phil Mottram. He is Vice President of Communications and Media Solutions at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So Phil, can you just remind us how deeply involved HPE is in the telecom sector? I mean, the company has a rich heritage in telecoms, doesn't it? Absolutely right, yeah. The company's been involved in the telecom sector now for over 30 years, uh, and we have 5,000 individuals who are dedicated to providing software and services to telecoms companies around the world. So it's a big part of our business and it represents north of 10% of the company's turnover. So it's absolutely critical to the company's future. Okay, excellent. So uh, as mentioned, 2020 has been a very unusual year. Uh, what are the key themes that you're seeing coming out of the telcos right now? Yeah, I think in terms of the key themes that we see coming out of the telcos, they really sit in two areas. One's around digital transformation. And I think telecoms companies that had started that journey before the pandemic hit were able to accelerate the journey through the pandemic. So I think they benefited quite a lot there. I think for organizations that hadn't really started down that journey, they find it difficult to get those initiatives off the ground in that pandemic remote working environment. So that would be around digital transformation. And then the other area of activity and interest we saw was clearly around 5G, be that either open RAN, core 5G, or increasingly private 5G and enterprise 5G services out at the edge. Okay. And do you think the pandemic has delayed or changed any telco purchasing decisions in relation to, to 5G? Uh, and do you think that COVID-19 has brought about any positives in the telecom industry at all? I think COVID-19 has reconfirmed the importance of telecoms companies to nations and economies around the world, because I think without great telecoms infrastructure, many countries and companies would have really struggled during this pandemic. So I think that's been a big tick in the box for telcos um, around the world. And then with regard to any impact that that's had on the investment and spending of telecoms companies. I mean, maybe a little bit of a slowdown, but not a huge one, because as I say, telecoms companies have been very resilient during the pandemic. OK. And then in terms of 5G, uh, when do you expect the telcos to start deploying standalone 5G uh, and rolling out services using 5G network slicing? Uh, and what are the business drivers for these? Yeah, we see many um, organizations looking at standalone 5G pilots beginning in 2021 with live services starting towards the end of 2021, 2022. As you mentioned, they're looking to slice the network into different channels, if you like. And so they're talking about maybe there's one channel for consumer customers, maybe offering a differentiated level of service for business customers. Maybe there might be an IoT channel. Maybe there might be an emergency services, autonomous vehicles type channel. So yeah, we're seeing lots of organizations now deciding, okay, when we have this true end-to-end -end 5G capability with network slicing, how can we deploy that to the benefit of our customers? So um, why is the migration of compute to the edge important to telcos? And how is this informing their relationships with the hyperscalers? Yeah, look, I think this is going to be one of the really interesting things that we're going to see play out over the next couple of years, the relationship between the telecoms companies and the hyperscalers. So obviously the hyperscalers have the draw of the application developers who've been putting their applications in these kind of public cloud platforms. And what they're going to want to do is move some parts of the application out towards the edge to exploit the lower latency that exists there. So what that means is that for the hyperscalers to remain relevant, they need to find a way to deliver their platform and land it out at the edge. And so you're seeing the hyperscalers take a different range of approaches there. Some of them are making acquisitions of telecom software companies. Some are partnering with the telecoms companies. And so we're seeing a range of different approaches there. And I guess if you're on the operator side, you're already out at the edge if you're providing the WAN. So if you're providing the fixed WAN for an enterprise customer, 
in particular, router there, a firewall, a VPN, maybe IP telephony, Wi-Fi, etc. So it's not that much of a step up the stack to be able to offer some edge compute platform. And if you don't do that, obviously you run the risk of the hyperscaler stepping in and eroding your position. And then at some point you become a dumb pipe. So I think it's gonna be fascinating to see how this plays out in the next couple of years. I would imagine we'll see a range of partnerships and probably some real hybrid approaches. But yeah, it'll be a fascinating part of the market to watch. Absolutely. So uh, lots of key developments in telecoms right now. Uh, what kind of relationship and what kind of discussions should telcos be having with HPE right now? Yeah, I mean, telecoms companies that are interested in maybe lowering their costs and getting more flexibility as a result of open 5G, um, either on the RAN side or on the core side, should definitely be talking to HPE. I think if you're interested in either improving customer services or deploying new services for enterprise customers. Again, that's a conversation that you should be having with us. And then last but not least, I think if you're interested in tying the costs of your infrastructure to the consumption basis of your customers, so that link between revenue and costs, then HPE is definitely the organization to be talking to around that. Okay, great. Well, lots of really interesting trends in telecoms right now. Phil, thanks for chatting with us today about all of these. No, my pleasure. Thank you.